Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at mappings, so we can answer questions from exercise 2b. So, what is mappings within the topic of functions? So, a mapping describes how one set of numbers, typically called the input numbers, can be transformed to another set of numbers, and typically calling those the output values. So, each mapping can be described as one of four different types of mappings, uh, either a one-to-one -one mapping, a many-to-one mapping, a one-to-many mapping, and a many-to-many -many mapping. So let's first have a look at the one-to-one -one mapping types. And in this mapping type, each input value has one output value and vice versa as well. So let's take the mapping of adding on three to each input value. So no matter what value is in your set of input numbers, your output numbers are just going to be three um, bigger. So for example, minus three will go to zero, six will go to nine, etc., etc. And it's easy to see how the vice versa bit of this will work as well. So the each output value will have one specific input value that it will go back to as well. And you would work that out by subtracting three from your output values to go back. So a graph for this may look something like this, but it's typically written as a function like something like this. x plus 5, 3x minus 2, where the graphs of these types of functions are always going upwards um, or downwards, and only upwards and only downwards. It can never go from uh, left to right as a horizontal graph, and it can never go back upwards once it's gone back downwards. Okay, so for example this sort of graph here is not a one-to-one -one function. Reason being is because if we were to take, say, the output value of 6 here, there would be 1, 2, 3 values that will be <coughs> that 6 will be the output value for. So there'd be 3 values that would all go to the value 6, and that is not a one-to-one -one mapping. The type of mapping that that would be is a many-to-one mapping. So let's look at a many-to-one mapping. And in this type of mapping, each input value has one output value, but some output numbers may be arrived at by more than one input. So for example, squaring each input value. It's very true that each input value will have only one output value. Um, so, for example, minus 1 will have an output value of 1, minus 1, so 1 will have an output value of 1, minus 2 will have an output value of 4, and 2 will also have an output value of 4. So it's true that each input value has one output, but in this case here, we have many inputs that can go to a single output. So in this case here, where we have a many to one from inputs to outputs, it's called a many-to-one mapping. And many can mean any number. It doesn't just necessarily need to be two. It can involve three. It can involve four input values going to the same output value. Not all input values have to have two or more. Um, so not all output numbers have to have two or more uh, input values. For example, zero will only be mapped back to zero, but it still counts as a many-to-one mapping. So other types of many-to-one mappings include x squared plus anything else, really. As long as it's got an x squared in there, it's probably going to be a many-to-one mapping. Sine x, so let me just remind you of the sine x graph. It's going to look a little bit like this. So for any output value, we'll call it x, there are multiple, in not, if not an infinite, amount of input values that could have reached that output value. Okay, so x squared functions are the very famous um, one to many, many to one mappings. Whoops, I should say many to one mappings. Okay, so those two f types of mappings there are the only types that we're going to consider as functions. So the definition of a function is that a function is a mapping whereby every element in the domain, that's a posh word for inputs, is mapped to only one element in the range. The range is a posh word for outputs. 
So, i.e., wherever, whatever number you start with, there is only one possible answer to the operation performed on it. So, let's just have a look at these types of mappings again. They're either a one-to-one -one mapping or a many-to-one mapping. Okay, so it's true that any um, input value has one and one only output value, and that is the definition of a function. Okay. So an example of a mapping which is not a function uh, would be considered uh, the square rooting, where your answer may have either no answer or two answers. So a, a mapping that is not a function may be a one-to-many mapping, where if you've got some um, element x, then for example it could be the positive square root of x or the negative square root of x. That may be an example of a function that's not, uh, an example of a mapping that's not actually classed as a function. Okay, so just a reminder, one-to-one -one functions generally have um, graphs that go in a straight line or, a, a, or one single direction. It can be a little bit curved, but not too much. And a many-to-one function um, will have more than one input for each output number. Um, classic examples of things that are not functions are, for example, circles. So x squared plus y squared equals r squared is not a function. Um, 1 over x, when you've got the point 0, you actually get no output values for that. So that's why that sometimes classes as something that is not a function. Okay, so there we are. Those are the two different types of mappings that class as functions. The one-to-one -one one -one mapping and the many-to-one mapping. Um, what I'd like you to have a go at here is just a simple question that is to draw the mapping diagram. So that's effectively just the two circles, one with your input values and one with your output values. And fill these um, spaces here. Your input values are going to be these numbers here and you'll have to work out the output values for yourself. Pause the video and try this question out. Alright then, so for the first question A, our inputs are going to be 4, 5, 6 and 7. The output for 3 is going to be 15 minus 3, which is 12. 20 minus 3 is 17. 25 minus 3 is 22. And 30 minus 3 is 27. So this is the input um, set of numbers and this is the output set of numbers. Part B is going to look a little bit bigger. We're going to have minus 3, and I'll put 3 next to it, minus 2, and I'll put 2 next to it, minus 1, and I'll put 1 next to it, and 0. And hopefully you've worked out why. Um, oh, no, actually, it's got a minus 3 on it, so it doesn't work. Uh, x squared minus 3, so that's going to be minus 3 will go to 9, minus 3 will go to 6. 3 will go to 9, minus 3 will go to 6 as well. So it would look a little bit like this. Minus 2 squared will be 4. Minus 3 will give me 1. <coughs> 2 squared will give me 4. Minus 3 will give me 1 as well. Minus 1 squared will go to 1. Minus 3 will go to minus 2. And so will 1. So this thing here is clearly a many to 1 mapping. And um, 0 will just go to minus 3. So even though 0 um, is just a 1 to 1 mapping, the whole mapping in general is considered a many to 1 mapping. Part C is a little bit more tricky in the calculations. So it's going to be um, minus 1, 0 and 1. Um, 7 over 4 minus 3. Uh, so let's do 1 first. Um, 4 minus 3 is 1, so that will go to 7. 0 will go to 7 over 4. And 7 over 4 minus 3 times minus 1, that will be plus 3, so that will go to 1. Okay, so there we are. That looks like it's going to be a 1 to 1 mapping, just for these elements here. 
Alright then, so have a go at some of these questions from exercise 2b. There are a couple more videos to finish off exercise 2b, so you may want to click ahead and have a look at those videos before trying out the entirety of exercise 2b. But anyway, thanks for watching.